Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 74. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, do you have a product or service that you would like to share with the 100,000 plus unique downloads a month Entrepreneur on Fire generates? Chris Brogan did, and when he sponsored an episode, he saw great results. If you'd like to have 15 seconds at the top of our show to share your product or message, go to www.sponsoreofire.com to find out more. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Roche Khan. Roche, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely. I'm ready to rock, my friend. Awesome. After graduating medical school at the age of 22, Roche decided he wanted to be an entrepreneur and founded Social Rank Media from his bedroom in January of 2011. Over the past two years, his bedroom business has grown into a global social media agency. His passionate team at Social Rank Media now work with small and large brands, including Fortune 500s. When he's not busy with his agency, he spearheads humanitarian projects in Guyana, South America. Roche, I've given a little overview, but tell us a little more about who you are personally, where you're from, your age, and then launch into your business. Cool, man. So, um... Uh, my name is Roche Khan, like you mentioned, thanks for the intro. Uh, I'm 25 years old and I run a social media agency, Social Rank Media. So, you know, I kind of decided after graduating med school that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and decided social media was going to be the, the thing for me. And I, I built out my business on a social media platform. So really, you know, kind of going around to local small medium businesses, knocking on doors, telling them about what I do with social media and getting them to sign on board. and then over time leveraging that to you know get better and better and better clients to where we were working with fortune 500s and, and today we're, we're in a pretty nice space with our with our business and we've got a growing team and you know we've got clients in Dubai and Africa and Singapore so it, it's been a fun ride sounds like a real fun ride Roche and I definitely look forward to delving into that more later but before we do, let's transition to our first topic, which is a success quote. Because at Entrepreneur on Fire, we love getting the motivational ball rolling early and really getting our listeners pumped for the content that you have for us. So, Roche, what do you have for us as your favorite success quote? Sure, John. Okay, so, you know, my favorite quotes, they change all the time. You know, if, if you asked me this six months ago, I'd probably tell you something different. Nice. But but there is this one quote that's that's been stuck in my head lately, and it, it, I actually heard it from Ryan Lee at his dot com expo event. You know, someone in the audience had asked him, you know, why are you so successful? What's the reason for you being so successful? And this is what he said: uh, Success is as easy as don't stop. And I'll repeat that again: Success is as easy as don't stop. And and when he said that, it really resonated with me because. You know, that's been the one line that would sum up my entire life. Persistence has always been, uh, you know, the key to my success. I love that quote for so many reasons. I mean, so many entrepreneurs just do not have the stamina to maintain what they need to do, the level of determination and ingenuity to really see their success through. And it's just so sad to see that when that happens, because if they had just stayed a little bit longer or just weathered that last storm, they really might have seen the bright side. You just really never know. And Seth Godin's book, The Dip, really dies into that well. Have you read that, Roche? I have, actually. I'm a huge Seth Godin fan. I, if, if I can just add a little bit there, if, if it's cool with you. You know, I, like, like you said, I, th I think we, we all come to this point where we, 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 we want to give up. And every single entrepreneur goes through that. You know, that's definitely been the case for me. Um, but the one thing I wanted to share is this, you know, I'm a huge believer in, in, the, in this concept or this idea that, that failure is inevitable, but so is success if you decide to fail forward when you fail, if that makes sense. That's another great quote. It makes a ton of sense. And Roche, this is about your journey as an entrepreneur. So that was a great quote. Now take us down to the ground level. How have you actually applied this quote to your mentality or a real life example at Social Rank? Okay, absolutely. So, you know, one of the recent examples I'll tell you, things were, were, were picking up, things were going pretty good um, with social rank and 
all of a sudden we started to notice that sales were dropping off and you know we were actually going backwards in, in terms of sales and we wanted to, to, to really get to, to the bottom of this you know what was the cause of this and you know a lot of my friends said listen the social media thing is over you should just give it up you know stop this whole agency thing and I was like no this this there's something here we, we gotta keep moving um, and what we really did was realize that the strategy we were on wasn't working and that we had to change it so we we sat down we looked at what it was and what we figured out was that we just had no advertising going on you know a lot of the business was based on word-of-mouth referrals and that's great but it will only get you so far so once we found the solution um, once we found the answer to, to that we we decided to launch more advertising campaigns use Facebook use other ad networks and really get the message out there and now sales are doubling sales are tripling and it's been phenomenal you know I had the chance to kinda you know uh, kick the bucket in terms of the company but but we, we kept on moving that's a great example and let's use that to transition to our next topic which is failure as an entrepreneur, Roche, you've experienced failure, I've experienced failure, it's part of being an entrepreneur, and you've alluded to this before, but in some ways, it's our job to fail every day, because if we're not actually failing, we're not improving as entrepreneurs, we're not learning, we're not pushing ourselves to the limit. So take us back to a time in your journey with Social Rank, or even prior, whatever is just a great example to share with Fire Nation of a failure you've had and how you've overcome it. Sure. I think... I think more than just the failure, my, my initial problem was, was really getting launched. Like that was my big challenge. That was my huge obstacle. You know, how do you go from, from being this medical graduate to, to getting launched and catapulting into the social media space? That was, was my number one problem. You know, after I, I kind of figured out what I wanted to do, when, and that's a whole other story as to why I chose the social media space, I realized that I had this issue of being a newbie. You know, but how was I going to get the word out there? So would you like me to kind of dive into that? Yeah, we'd love to hear just of an actual failure that you encountered while you were just building this process. Okay, sure. So, you know, in terms of getting everything launched, getting out there, you know, when I hit the streets and, and I literally did this, you know, walking around, knocking on doors, I got a lot of no's. You know, who was going to listen to this this 23 year old kid who says he can bring me more customers using this thing called Facebook um, and I got rejected quite a bit um, but I realized that I, I just had to keep doing it and I realized that branding was important really important so I kind of I kind of fixed my game in terms of you know who did I reach out to who did I connect with who were the influencers in the market that I could reach out to and how could I set myself up and brand myself in a nice way where my website looked good, my letterhead looked good, my business card looked good, and people started to, to take me seriously you know, with, with more credibility. And after I, I did all those things, uh, you know, I started picking more clients and it really started to work. For me specifically, you know, in terms of, of, of really getting my stuff out there, I, I did some research to, to find out you know, who was a really good influencer in the market that I could maybe connect with. So I, I did a whole bunch of research and I found this awesome connection. Uh, I think you know him, John. His name is Chris Farrell. Um, he's known as being, you know, the, the number one internet marketer in the world, voted the number one internet marketer in the world. And he's one of the nicest and genuine guys I know. So when, when I found him and, and I realized that, you know, he was an influencer in his market, in this internet marketing in, industry, I know this sounds a bit creepy, but um, I actually started to cyber stalk him. So, you know, what I really did was follow him. Every webinar he was on, I was on. You know, I'd stay till the very end of the webinars that he did, and I'd make sure I get to like the Q and A section, and I'd ask questions. You know, I'd comment on his fan page, I'd shoot him emails that did a little bit of ego baiting, um, along with providing valuable ideas on how he could improve his social media game. And before you knew it. He started to take note and he started talking to me. And Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. And it went even further to where he was telling people about me, recommending my service, in, in, recommending my services, um, introducing me to his network. And man, John, let, let me tell you, it was phenomenal. You know, that cyber stock relationship turned out so amazing that now not only is he a great mentor, but he's a dear friend and we spend heaps of time together. And he's been the one guy that's been responsible for initially getting the word out on the internet. 
That's phenomenal. And yeah, Chris is just such a genuine guy out there. He was at the dot com expo that we both attended recently, and his speech was just so moving, so inspirational. It's just the kind of people that you want to emulate in this industry. So that is such a great mentality. And, you know, cyber stock kind of has a bad connotation to it in some ways. But the reality is you just found an amazing mentor. You made sure you got on his radar. He got to know who you were as the same genuine, honest, caring person. And you guys matched. And it made, makes a lot of sense, Roche. So I definitely give you credit for that. I commend you for that. And it's definitely a great lesson that you pulled out of that initial failure, which was just these initial no's that you're, you were getting, which is going to happen whenever anybody starts out in a business. That's just the name of the game. So thank you for sharing that with Fire Nation. Such valuable insights. And we're going to use that to transition now to the next topic, which is the other side of the spectrum, Roche. This is the great side of it. This is that aha moment. And you are just such a young, brilliant guy. I know you have these little aha moments every single day that inspire you, that move you forward, that gets you excited. Can you share with Fire Nation one huge light bulb moment that you've had and actions that you took to put that into success? Absolutely, man. Um, you know, like you mentioned, there are a ton of aha moments, but like the really big one came about when I figured out this process I now call, you know, finding your client multiplier. It's, it's really simple and it's really old, but uh, one day I was reading about supply chain management and how distributors work, you know, where they provide products to retailers and then the retailers then stock merchandise and sell. And while I was reading that, this, this kind of spark went off in my head and I was thinking how could I duplicate a similar system in our business where I didn't have to go and find each client like I, I didn't have to find every end consumer I could be the distributor and then I could have retailers that would sell my clients to that I could sell my services to their clients you know that's what I call the, the client multiplier so you know I started thinking about this and I realized that there were a heap of digital marketing agencies and traditional marketing companies that could use my company's social media services for their clients. So then I started to reach out to them and I put together a nice little PDF report, a couple PowerPoint presentations, called them up on the phone and said, listen, you know, here's what we do as a social media agency. And for the most part, they loved it. You know, it meant that they could practically outsource all of their social media to us without having to hire internal staff to learn and deal with this ever-changing world of social media. And it ended up being a complete win-win. You know, not only did they have dozens of clients, some of them had hundreds of clients. So right away we were signing massive accounts and of course we were happy and they were happy and, and that strategy of us being a distributor and then having these retailers out there, that's become a huge part of your business now. That makes so much sense. I'm taking so many great notes right now, Roche. Thank you for sharing these insights with us because it's just so real and they're so applicable in so many different ways and so many different industries. On that note, have you had an I've made it moment yet? Definitely. I keep having I've made it moments. You keep thinking you're there and then you keep breaking through and, and it's amazing. But with that same strategy I talked about, you know, I was going through our bank reports, going through the accounts and everything. And just a couple months in using this new strategy, I saw that, that our company had grossed over six figures in one month. And I hit the roof, you know, like I couldn't believe it. Um, it was gratifying, it was validating because now I'm, our company is making all this profit and I could funnel it into my big picture humanitarian projects, which is what the goal was all, all along. So now, you know, we're, we're doing medical outreaches, we're building schools and it's, it's fun, it's phenomenal, all because the company is doing well. And um, even though, you know, at that point, I felt like, yeah, I've made it. I know there's a, a lot more ground to cover, man. And in order to do that, you, you just got to stay on top of things. I love that. That is such a great I made it moment. And it's so awesome that you're recognizing these moments, Roche, because as entrepreneurs, so many times we just set these goals and we hit these benchmarks and then we just, again, raise that ladder even higher and put our nose to the grindstone and drive forward. And we never really appreciate the achievements. We never enjoy the journey. And it's all about the journey. You've obviously got your head on straight because you're doing so many wonderful things in the humanitarian world and also in the social media world, helping so many people and so many businesses. You're just really hitting it on all cylinders. So I commend you and Fire Nation commends you for enjoying the journey 
and really appreciating the I've made it moments that you've had. I appreciate that, John. Thank you, man. So let's move on to your current business now. You have so much stuff going on. I'd love to hit both ends of the spectrum. I really would love to talk about what you're doing down in South America. I'd love to talk about social ranks some more. So let's start with um, down in South America. What's one thing that's really exciting you down in Guyana right now? You know, I, I think a lot of people look at third world countries for granted and they, they, real, they don't realize that there's so much opportunity in a third world country. Because if, if you think about it, the developed nations have already gone through a certain trajectory. And if you're in a third world country, you know how it's going to play out. Certain things haven't been introduced to them yet. So, for example, um, like frozen yogurt, you know, that's that's a pretty uh, common thing in, in the U.S. Everywhere's got frozen yogurt. But you bring something like a frozen yogurt franchise to Guyana, to South America, and it's all the rage because people haven't seen this. There's a huge population down there, and they go crazy about it. So, so just from a business perspective, being in a place like Guyana, you know, a third world country, it's... It's amazing in terms of opportunity. But then there's also, you know, the, the other side, the people. And I absolutely love the people in Guyana. I actually grew up for a few years in Guyana. So I feel very connected with these folks. And um, it's, it's amazing. You know, you get to, to impact their lives. And then they go out there and they make the world a better place. So, you know, as of right now, we, we're launching, you know, JobSpark Guyana, which is like an on, online job site. We're building schools. We're doing medical outreaches. Um, we're launching educationforthenation.com, which is this, this online education website because the, the education system is a bit broken here in Guyana, but they launched this new campaign where every house is going to get a laptop. So I thought, you know, that's the best way to, to, to leverage technology. For every house that gets a laptop, let's get them to the internet and then let's give them education for free so everything they're supposed to learn in school is now available online. So there's a, there's a lot going on, like you mentioned. You know, there's the humanitarian side, and then there's the business aspect. But it, it's it's thoroughly exciting. Have you ever seen the movie Back to the Future? I have actually. When you're talking about Guyana and things along those lines, it really just reminds me of that movie when Michael J. Fox goes forward in time and he gets all of the sports scores from the future. Right. Then he comes right. back and he can just bet because he knows obviously who's going to win the games because he has all of the final scores. And it's kind of sounds like you're describing Guyana or South America or third world countries in general in that way with the fact that the history is already written for these places. Like they're about to go through the same evolutions that we have gone through the United States 30, 40, 60, 80 years ago. So you know what's going to happen. It's just a matter of getting ahead of that train, which you can do down in these third world countries. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's really exciting because, you know, you've got a massive population in South America and everybody's coming online now. You know, Brazil is coming online like it's never been before. So, you know, those, those, those things that were really popular still are popular in the States, like, you know, exercise and weight loss. Those things are really blowing up in Brazil. But from an internet perspective, in terms of getting cheap clicks, you know, where you can set up your ads on an ad network and people click onto them, you're getting them in Brazil for two, three, and four cents versus, you know, in, in the United States where it's a pretty competitive niche now and you've got to pay anywhere between, you know, 50 cents to three dollars per click. So, so very exciting. And yes, you kind of do know, you know, the future. And, uh, but I love it. That is so cool. Thanks for sharing that with us, Roche. So let's jump over to social rank now. What's one thing that's really exciting you about social rank? Cool. So, you know, one of the coolest things about our business is that it forces us to be on the bleeding edge of what's going on. You know, what's the latest network? What's the latest traffic method? How can we connect with more people? And I just love that. You know, being able to, to be so far ahead that you can almost predict what's going to happen, um, it's very, very exciting. But... But then being able to use this and connect with people all over the world, that's the icing on the cake. You know, like I mentioned before, we have clients all over the world. So, you know, one minute we're talking to people in Africa, then we're scheduling a call in Singapore, then we're talking to our clients in Australia. And, and that to me, that, that ability to connect with people all over the world and strategize and realize that the same strategies work everywhere because, you know, we're all humans at the end of the day. That's really exciting. That's such exciting stuff, Im. There's one thing that I just would love to go back to that we just talked about earlier in this interview and I just couldn't, I just can't quite wrap my head around it and I'd love for you to expound a little more into it. You were talking about social rank 
and how you kind of hit a wall at some point where you were just losing sales month after month and you were just relying on the referrals that you were getting and they just wasn't picking up the steam that you were hoping for or continuing that momentum. And then you hopped on to the advertisement sector. Can right. you really take us through and share with Fire Nation the steps that you took and the engines that you use to propel social rank forward? Absolutely. So because we're in social media, one of the easiest spaces that we, we figured out was Facebook. And their ad platform is just amazing it's because, because of the kind of targeting that you can do. And then because the cheaps are so click, uh, the, the, the clicks are so cheap, sorry, um, what we did was sit down and figure out who is our target market? Okay, who do we want to reach? Okay, there's small business owners, realtors, doctors, dentists, uh, chiropractors, anybody that can use social media to propel their business forward and make money from it. So once we figured out what the, the target market was, what we did was go into the Facebook ad platform and really just start laser targeting exactly who we wanted. And the trick was to make your ad as local as possible. So we wouldn't just target the entire United States of America. What we would do is target states uh, state by state. So we'd focus on California, then we'd focus on New York. And what we would do is within those states, we would focus on each of these uh, demographics because people respond when an ad is relevant to them. So here's what we did. We launched these ads that would have pictures and copy that was relevant to each niche. And then we'd have people click on the ad in order to get something for free. Okay, so we'd have a free strategy session, or we'd have a free white paper, or we'd give away software for free. Uh, we had a couple different things we'd line up. And then that person would opt into our list. So we would therefore uh, there, I capture their lead. And once we captured their lead, we would build that that uh, rapport with them using an email sequence, finding out more about them, asking about their issues, and then sending information that was relevant to them um, to help them with their business. And they started to know, like, and trust us. And after going through that sequence for about you know five or seven emails, they start calling us up saying, listen, we, we've had enough. You know, we, we really like your content, but we don't have the time to do it. Can you guys just do it for us? And when we started to see that happen, we just ramped it up and we put more and more and more ad spend into the ads because they were so cheap. And we've been seeing massive returns in excess of 2000%. Wow, that's exciting, Roche. <laughs> so let's move on now because the word entrepreneur is really a mystery to most people. At Entrepreneur on Fire, we really like to pull that curtain back and just kind of show the listeners here at Fire Nation that although no two days are ever the same, especially for you, Roche, because you're just all over the place, your hands are in so many different jars, and you're just a man of men. It's very impressive. But there are definitely some tasks that you're doing day after day that are just keeping both sides of these trains rolling forward. Can you just share with us two tasks that do seem to occupy a good portion of your day every day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, I just love building the rapport with my team. So every day, every single day, I'm always trying to figure out ways to empower them and to motivate them. Because I believe, you know, one of the secrets to success is surrounding yourself with a powerful team. So I try my best to give, you know, I try to give them my best as much as I can. Um, whether that's going online and finding motivating articles, whether that's really just a five minute call, you know, that's a pep talk in the morning, whether I have them share where they are today and how they feel and how we can tackle this together as a team. I, I just do a lot of team building exercises every single day and it's become one of those things that the team looks forward to. And because we have a global team, it's really fun because you know, we've got people in pajamas signing on, you know, we've got people in, in their lunch hours, it, and, and it's great. Everyone's co always coming together. We're trying to, to, to figure out how we can be a more successful team. And, um, and we have a lot of fun doing it because I believe if I empower the team, I'll empower the company and we'll empower our clients and thus we'll empower the world. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I do every single day. Um, another thing I like to do, I don't get to do this every day, but I, I try to do this as, as much as I can. And that's to handle support calls and emails myself. You know. It's, it's pretty easy to, to say, oh yeah, I'm the CEO and I've got to support staff and they do all what they're supposed to do and I kind of just give them mandates and directives. But for me personally, I love being in the trenches. So I love to speak to my clients directly. 
And instead of having the support guys do it all the time, you know, it keeps me fresh, it keeps me on my toes, and it keeps me empathetic. You know, John, it, it keeps me empathetic because I understand what my team members are going through when they're dealing with the clients, and I understand what the clients want you know, when dealing with, with my team members. So that's, that's one thing I love to do. I always tell people, you know, email me, you know, um, I, I respond, uh, you, you can find me, you can call me. It's, it's, just, it's just something I enjoy doing. And what better way than to find out what's still the ongoing pain of your customers to continue to promote and to build products for them? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's really big right there. Not only does it help us figure out, you know, what their pain points are and then we can provide better services, but from, you know, an organizational point of view, what we do now is that if we see that we're getting these 10 questions or these 10 complaints over and over again, what I've done is create these kind of protocols. So if someone says this, you know, you have to carry out X, Y, and Z. And it becomes very easy for the support team, uh, the new support team that comes on board, any, any of our new employees that go, uh, you know, I don't know how to deal with this. We've got a mapped out protocol system that they can follow through step by step while still keeping it very humanized and personal, but at least they've got structure and flow and they're not lost. So on that note, Roche, what is your vision for the future in all of your ventures? Going forward, I, I think our strategy is evolving uh, to include app development, at least on the social rank side. You know, we, we've just created an app. It's, it's the first one in the world and it's already producing amazing results in, in beta. I can't talk about it too much because it's, it's not officially ready for release, but that's a big part of what we're going to do. It's creating applications that make it easy for small and big brands to, to generate leads using social media. And I could kind of give a little hint to what it is and it might get people excited. And that's, um, you know, Typically, when you're trying to capture a lead or you're trying to get an opt-in, you send people to a squeeze page or a custom landing tab on Facebook. You basically have to send them that, that name and email form. Well, we figured out that 80% of the time spent on Facebook is spent in the newsfeed. So we're always scrolling up and down in the newsfeed and we created an application that allows a business owner or anyone to put an opt-in form inside of the newsfeed. So you can have people opt into your list, their name and email address inside of the newsfeed without sending them to a website. And you can input, you can put videos and all sorts of different things. So that's that's really exciting, and I think that's the future for our company. Um, and I'm I'm really pumped about that. And we also plan on on creating a social rank university, which is going to be a free online university for all social media fundamentals. You know, anyone that wants to learn about social media from the guys um, that do it for Fortune 500s, which is us. You know. Fortune 500s and mom and pop stores, we, we're going to put all our case studies up there, all our processes, all our flows, so that social media managers can use it, small small and medium business owners can use it, um, just about anyone. Anyone can, can go ahead and, and, and tap that information. Man, I love that. And if you need any beta testers for that new app, Entrepreneur on Fire volunteers. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you for signing up, man. I'll shoot that link over to you. <laughs> yes. So, Roche, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning round, and this is where I get to ask you a series of questions. You can come back at Fire Nation with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. What was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Hmm. Okay, so, so I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur second year in a medical school. Um, I loved medicine, and I loved what it was all about, but, you know, I... I, I had this burning desire to be an entrepreneur because it would enable me to do all the things I wanted to do. And um, I had a lot of people in my family tell me, listen, your second year in a med school, you know, why, why are you going to quit? And I kind of decided at that point to stick it out because um, I, I wanted the MD, I wanted to be credible. You know, I, I think it adds a lot of credibility to have, you know, an MD behind your name. And it worked out really well for me. But but in as much as that held me back from a time perspective from being an entrepreneur, I didn't waste time um, with delving into entrepreneurial materials. So even though I was at med school, I was always reading, you know, Forbes magazine, Harvard Business Review, um, you know, socialmediaexaminer.com, and all these, these business blogs out there, entrepreneur.com, kind of just, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I was absorbing all this information and learning about the entrepreneurial world. What is the best business advice you ever received? Okay, so I'm not, I'm not sure where I heard it from or, or where I read it, but 
it's, it's this kind of this mantra of mine, and it's it goes like this: um, When you're small, act big, and when you're big, act small. And that's that's always been powerful advice for me. And I think it's especially important for up and coming entrepreneurs because you know there's this getting started phase, which is so important. And um, let me just explain. So when you're when you're small, act big, and when you're big, act small. So you know when you're small, when you when you're just starting up, and you're now trying to get clients, and you're now trying to get out there, you don't want to come across as you know that punk kid who lives in a basement who doesn't know what he's doing, right? No one's going to take you um, as credible. Um, so, so what I like to do is is create really great branding from the very get go. That means amazing letterheads. Um, even though you might have a ghetto website, and that's fine. Um, you know, make sure it looks professional. Um, have good business cards. Just just look good and bigger than you are, and people are going to take you seriously. And you're going to start building up a really nice client base when you do that. Learn the language of the people that you're selling to. And, um, and people will feel comfortable with you. They will know, like, and trust you. But then there comes that point, you know, where there's a tipping point and you're getting so many clients, your company's growing, you're getting really big and people don't want to deal with that, that feeling of dealing with a big corporation, you know. Instead, they want to feel like they're dealing with someone who understands kind of the small town approach. They want it to be very, you know, personable. They want it to be very um, humanized. And the big brands are trying to do this every single day. So in that case, once you reach to that point, you know, when you're big, what you want to do is act small. Like, like what Geico does, for example. They want you to feel like there's every local, you know, Geico office around that you can that you can go into and you you can uh, talk to your agent and you feel like you're connecting with a person. So when you're small, act big, and when you're big, act small. I hope that makes sense. It does make sense, and it's definitely a balancing act because clients, they want to see you featured in the Wall Street Journal, but then they want to talk to you, and it's tough to be both of those people, (laughs) but when you can, it's great. So, Roche, what's something that's working for you or your business right now? Sure. So, So, I mentioned earlier advertising. That's working really well for us. So once we use advertising to, to get the clients, we like to keep our customers happy. I mean, who doesn't, right? You know, don't just keep them happy, but keep getting them results. And what we love to do is send them lots of freebies and lots of bonuses. So that might be new content that we create or new software that we release, but we sell to everyone else, but we give it to free for our customers. Um, or even postcards, you know, with handwritten notes. Like we literally write them out. We don't print them out with cursive handwriting, with a cursive font. We we write these these uh, postcards out and we sign them and we send them with smiley faces. And or or we'll do like UPS delivered cupcakes, and clients love it. You know, they go crazy about it. They love it, and and they just become like the biggest brand ambassadors ever. And they tell everybody about the experience that they're having with the company, and it creates a lot of goodwill. And uh, every, it's it's a win win for everyone. That's great. Let me just add a couple things to this. It is a lot cheaper to keep customers than to get new ones. Absolutely. And also, it's a lot cheaper to get free referrals from happy customers than to pay for cold leads. Absolutely. Absolutely in agreement. You know, that's, that's part of the reason. So we use advertising to kind of jumpstart the leads. But then once we started implementing this and really taking care of our customers and keeping them really happy, that's why when things really started to explode. Roche, do you have an internet resource that you can recommend for Fire Nation? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I've got two that I can share, and they're they're kind of again, you know, my secret weapon. But um, I'll share them anyway because because you guys rock. Okay, so so the first one is summary dot com, and it's great for business book summaries. You know, there's so many, there's so much good material. There's so many good authors out there. You can't read every single book out there. So. What summary.com does is really just create these four page and eight page summaries of all the books and they give you all the themes and everything you need to get the most out of a book without having to read it. It's, it's phenomenal, but not only that, they do these live webinars where you get to connect with all the authors. So you, can, you, you get the opportunity to connect with New York Times best selling authors, which is phenomenal. And they also do this, this newsletter that they give out every month with tips on how to be a good entrepreneur and how to be a good leader. Very, very powerful. I would recommend everybody sign up with summary.com. And um, the other one that I use is readitfor.me. And it's very similar to summary.com, but they do something else. They, they do summaries of books, but they understand that 
not everybody wants to read or not everybody has the time to read and what they do is create these 10 to 15 minute videos that are designed to make you remember the material from the book so they have all these like wacky animations and you know they've got all these different colors going on on the screen and um, they do a lot of pattern interruption so you watch these videos for 10 15 minutes and you walk away with with all the knowledge from the book and it's not a replacement for reading the book but it's really just a way to get the best stuff out of the book. What I like to do is if I find a summary or a video that I really like and it really resonates with me, I'll then go and buy the book and I'll, I'll, I'll read the entire thing. So yeah, that's, that's two resources, summary.com and readit4.me. What's your favorite business book, Roche? Uh, my favorite business book. Okay, so I've got a couple, but if there was just one book we'll that take I two. would have... Okay. All right. Um, okay, I'll give you two. The first book that I would have someone have to read would be The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. Now, that book completely changed the way I approach business. I recommend that you read that every few months. You're going to learn something new. It's really going to teach you how to take your business to the next level. Um, that's one book. Please read it. The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. The other book that I would have people read is Lead with a Story by Paul Smith. That book is phenomenal because if you want to be a leader, if you want to be uh, anyone that's, that's really putting a team together, then you need to be a good communicator. And what he does in that book is really give you a heap of different stories that you can use for different scenarios. So if you've gone through failure, you can pull stories from the past to kind of inspire your team or inspire the people around you. Or if you're about to launch a new product and you really want to, you know, don't, you don't want to go over statistics and projections, but you want to bring it home and connect with your team, he's got stories in there of, of factual things that have happened that you can learn and use with your team. And trust me, it leaves a big impact on everybody. So, so that's two books, The Ultimate Sales Machine and Lead with a Story. Lead with a Story. Those will both be linked up in the show notes, Roche, at entrepreneuronfire.com slash 74. So... Listeners can go there, check it out, along with everything else that Roche has been talking about with Social Rank and everything that we've mentioned in this interview. Let's move on to the last question now, and it's my favorite, Roche, but you can take your time, digest, and then come back at Fire Nation with a great answer. If you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one, you still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, you have $500 in your pocket, a computer with internet access, and your food and shelter is all taken care of. What would you do in the next seven days? Okay, so the strategy I would deploy wouldn't even require the $500. You probably, you probably just need $200, and you can easy, easily, easily make $1,000 to $2,000 based on that. Um, but to explain what I do, I think it, it would be helpful to kind of break it down into into phases. Love it. So 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 the the first phase is is find your hungry market, okay? So do the research, go to magazine stands, find out what are the most popular magazines, you know, search for best-selling books, go to dummies.com and see which book sells the most, you know, really figure out what people want and what awesome value you can offer. And of course you've already got a certain knowledge and experience so you're going to be skewed towards you know a certain niche and that's fine but but find the hungry market and find the pain points in that hungry market and that's probably going to take about one day okay to to, to really um, do your market research if you do it properly it's going to take probably about one day and when you do this market research and you find all the pain points that takes you to phase two which would be to to create a product that that has a solution for these folks so that would probably take about two to three days you know you don't have to get fancy with it when you're creating a product I, I think a lot of people think that you have to spend weeks and months at a time creating a product but that really isn't the case if you know what the pain points are then you know what the solutions are so you don't need to get fancy about it you can create a product you know websites are really cheap to make um, you can use PowerPoint, you can use Keynote, you've got software out there like Jing and Camtasia to do screencasts. Um, and then you've got other software out there that if you can't afford it right away, um, you can use the free trial for 30 days. And trust me, it does everything that you need it to do. So kind of create your skeleton for your product and then over, uh, you know, flesh it out and then over deliver on the value that you place inside of your course. 
then you want to price your course anywhere around two hundred to three hundred dollars because you're delivering so much value and you're really hitting um, the pain points that people have. So, so that would be phase two. You know, that probably take about two to three days. Uh, and then the other part is you found the hungry market. You've you've created your product. Now you want to get traffic. Okay, you need to get people coming over to find your product. And getting traffic is as easy as two hours or six hours. But for the sake of this, you know, we can say you can get traffic in one day. Okay, let's just let's just do it for 24 hours. Find easy sources of traffic, and our favorite source of traffic um, is Facebook, just because it's it's really simple to set up. So what you would do is put money into your ad, then you send traffic to your offer. But before you just tell them all about you know what it is that you're offering, have some kind of capture system set up where you capture the lead. So there's an opt-in page of some kind, and then you can have them sign up for you know a webinar. Uh, an automated webinar or maybe you just take them directly to what you call a video sales letter that's like a 12 to 30 minute video on you know what their pain points are and, and why your solution uh, is, is the best thing for them so three steps okay phase one phase two phase three and if you do the math and, and, and if it's cool with you I'd like to go through the math on this to, sh to show you how it breaks down please do um, it, it's, it's phenomenal so on Facebook, you get really, really cheap clicks. Okay, you'll get anywhere between 25 cent clicks to 75 cent clicks. But for the sake of, of, of rounding numbers off and making this easy, um, let's just say it's a dollar per click. That, that's that's really expensive. But let's just say for some reason, when some, somebody clicks on your ad on Facebook, it's it's going to charge you a dollar. So if you put a hundred dollars per day into your ads, you're sending a hundred clicks. Remember, these are warm clicks. So these are warm leads. People are interested in what you're seeing in the ad because it's relevant to them, and then they're coming over to your offer. So you've got a hundred people now looking at your offer. And if your offer is good and you know this is something people want, you're gonna get them to convert. There will always be instant buyers. But if your product is really good, you can convert anywhere up to 10%. So that means 10 buyers out of the 100. But realistically, realistically, if you're just getting started, it's gonna be anywhere from like 2% to 5% for instant buyers. And remember, those are just the people that buy it right away. You still have collected the leads for everyone else, so you can still build rapport with them. So if 2 to 5% buy, that's 2 to 5 people. And if you're selling a product at $200, you're already at $400 to $1,000 in sales. If you, if you deduct the initial $100 that you spent on ads, you have a huge net profit, anywhere from $300 to $900. And, and that's how you make money on the internet. That's how you make money um, really quickly. So you keep repeating that process um, until it's really fine-tuned. And voila, you've got this you know, very basic funnel. You spent um, less than $500 to do it, and you're making a whole heap of money. What you can do with that money now is reinvest the money on building out your brand, you know, highlighting happy customers, um, getting creative by reaching out to influencers because you know, now you have a, a little track record so you can reach out to the guys who are on top of the niche and say, listen, this is what I've done for these clients. You can get the word out about me or how can I help you. Um, you can use that money to attend events. And of course, of course, what we do the money that we bring in, we just put it right back into the ad spend and we keep making more. I, I really hope I didn't lose anyone else there. I don't think so. I am totally with you. And the beautiful thing about podcasts is the pause and rewind feature. Can you just, before we let you go, I just can't get enough of this. Can you just go into real quickly, not too much in depth, but enough how do you really find the best way to craft that ad? Because there's Facebook can get so specific. How specific do you get with your ads? Okay, so so I give some secrets away here, and um, ninety percent of of your ad of, of the success with your ad has to do with the image. So look at other ads inside of your niche. Okay, when you're scrolling down your newsfeed because you've liked certain things and because you have certain activity on your on your. Um, you have certain activity on Facebook, there's certain types of ads targeting you. Look at what they're doing, analyze it, and then when you create your ads, try to be as different as possible. So one thing we like to do is just play with contrasting colors because it gets people's attention. So 
instead of you know, everyone's always putting these red borders around their ads, don't do that. Put green borders, put pink borders, put orange borders, or make your entire ad orange. You know, choose a color that's just going to stand out against this kind of gray, blue that Facebook has going on. And when people are scrolling down, it's kind of like interruption marketing. They're just going to see your ad out the corner of their eye, and it's going to pull their attention. And then they're going to see the headline. So you want to have a good headline. You want to put a question mark in there. You want to ask them something. You want to to kind of let them know that they can get something for free. Just just use some way to engage them. There's a couple a couple of different techniques um, that you can use. For us, we like asking questions um, that we know they're asking themselves. So you know, it could be, are you having trouble with social media, or are you not seeing any ROI with social media? And then in the copy, in, in the little text next to the ad, uh, the ad image, you kind of you know put some more information. So what we like to do, what works really well. We learned that people love to watch videos. So what we did was put videos um, as the solution to the problem. So we would say, you know, click here to get a free report on how you can double your your sales using social media in the next, you know, seven days. Um, that kind of stuff really gets people excited. But then what we do is put in brackets video, so they know what to expect. Uh, when they see video, they know when they click here they're going to see a video. So they click on there, we capture their lead, so we get their name and email address, and then we give them the video that we promised, and that works incredibly well. In terms of the in, in terms of the ad image, feel free to put text inside of the ad image as well. You know, this is really powerful because you've got all this real estate to play with. People are usually trying to cram it with their logo or faces, and, and it does work up to a point. But what really works is using a color that contrasts really well against Facebook and then putting text inside there. And please stay away from, from hot women. I don't know where people got this thing from, but they keep putting you know, good looking women inside of their ads. Don't do that because you know, the reason people are clicking on those ads is because they want to see more of, of the good looking woman. You know, they don't really care about your product. So make it as relevant as possible. You'll attract and pre-qualify leads. Um, before they click, so you're spending a small amount of money, but the people that do click are very relevant to you. That makes so much sense. And you keep alluding to you're capturing the lead. Now, at what point and how are you actually getting their email address? Where are you having them opt in? Okay, so what we like to do, if we're using Facebook traffic, we send them directly to a custom tab. So that's a, like a landing page, a squeeze page inside of Facebook that you can build out. It's kind of like a mini website. We basically state, again, you know, a, a full-fledged version of the ad now. So we might have a little video on there that says, hey, uh, when, you, when you sign up below or you give us your name and email address, um, we're going to give you this video or we're going to answer this que or these questions or if it's a white paper you know in the white paper once you sign up you're going to discover how to x y and z so you kind of put the lead right in front of the solution that they're looking for and you want to come off as credible of course because you want as much people to sign up as possible and um, if it's cool John I'd like to share a really uh, super ninja trick that we like to do that that multiplies leads like you would not imagine it is cool all right, cool. So what we do at that point, we get somebody to click on the ad, they go to the capture to the capture page, we get their name and email address, we give them the material that we promised them, but then we give them something else as well, but it's an exchange for a share. So we go, listen, if you like that content, we, you're going to love this because we've got this bonus material as well, but we're only going to give it to you if you share this with your friends. So they hit the share button. And then when people hit the share button, it goes out to all their friends, their friends see the link, and it's basically free traffic leveraged off of the, of the ad that you spent money on. That is so super ninja, so smart. I love it all, Roche. I want to keep talking all day, but man, I guess Fire Nation is just going to have to go to social rank and find out more on their own, but we have gotten more than we bargained for. Give us a plug, give us one parting piece of guidance, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure, man. Um, I would just say, you know, I think Nike got it right when they said just do it. Uh, a lot of people, they're scared, they're fearful, you know, they're, they're scared of, of not making it. Just, just do it. You know, it might seem really big and overwhelming at the very get go, but just break it down into small chunks and take it piecemeal at a time. Um, that's the one thing that's worked for me. And then you just, you've got your big objective out there. 
but break it down to milestones and, and get through each day, just like the, the strategy um, that I shared with you. Just break it down into phases. You want to be successful. We all know you want to be successful. Break it down into phases and you will get there. There will be some failures, but that's okay. Get up, brush off, and keep going. That's, that's what I'd say, man. I love it. Now, where can we find you? You can find my company at facebook.com forward slash social rank. You can find me personally. Like I said, I love talking with people. So, so hit me up on Facebook. If you just go to roshkhan.com, that will, that will just redirect you to, to my Facebook account. Um, so you can connect with me there, add me as a friend, subscribe, and um, shoot me any questions that you might have. I, I just love giving information away. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk to you guys. Roche. Thank you so much for your time and your generous, generous ninja tips. Fire Nation, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, my brother. It was a pleasure being here. All right, Fire Nation. Are you pumped up to create your own podcast now? Don't let your lack of time, knowledge, or skills hold you back. All you need to do is record an MP3, send it to my team, and we do the rest. It's really that simple. Visit www.podplatform.com to find out more. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.